guys, welcome to another lesson. We've been talking about microorganisms and then we've moved on to talking about towards a better health. How we can maintain a proper health even with the number of microorganisms that are present in the environment. In our previous video, we talked about the control of microorganisms. Today we are moving on to talk about another topic which is vectors and how we can control them. The control of vectors. So we want to start by defining what vectors are. So vectors are simply animals that transmit disease-causing organisms. What we mean by that is that we, vectors are not the ones that cause diseases themselves, but they carry disease-causing microorganisms or pathogens that cause the diseases. So they move these microorganisms and they transmit them into healthy animals. The, the, and those uh, microorganisms then cause the diseases. Now, the um, most important vectors of diseases that we have are the insects and the rodents, mostly. Insects and rodents. Actually, it's mostly insects and rodents. Mostly insects, but rodent, we also have rodents that cause diseases. So, um, we have examples of insect vectors as mosquitoes, houseflies, Sesa flies, lice, and fleas. And we have examples of rodent vectors as rats and mice. So in order to be able to control vectors, we have to know their habits and their life cycles. We have to know how they behave, how they react to different conditions. Before we can know how we can control them, how we can reduce their population, how we can stop them from spreading these diseases. So we're talking about different insect vectors, different rodent vectors that we have. In this video. So we're going to start with um, a very important insect vector which is the mosquitoes. Now mosquitoes, we have three main groups of mosquitoes that spread diseases which are the Anopheles mosquito, the Colex mosquito and the Aedes mosquito. The Anopheles mosquito spreads malaria, the Colex mosquito spreads encephalitis and um, the Aedes mosquito spreads a number of diseases such as dengue virus, yellow fever virus, um, Zika virus, and so on and so forth. So um, we'll be talking about the mosquitoes now and their life cycles, how to control them and different methods of controlling them. Now, mosquitoes undergo complete metamorphosis. We're talking about the life cycle now of mosquitoes. So mosquitoes undergo complete metamorphosis. In one of our previous videos, we've defined what metamorphosis is and the two types of metamorphosis that we have. So the complete metamorphosis involves egg, larva, pupa, and adult. So it has a complete cycle. There are intermediate um, levels from the egg to the larva to the pupa and then to the adult. So there are the first three stages of the complete metamorphosis that mosquito goes through occurs in water. Now for the female Anopheles mosquito, it breeds in clear moving water. For the Culex mos mosquito, it breeds in stagnant water bodies. And while the Aedes mosquito breeds in stagnant water in small containers found around the houses also, and other little water bodies like that. So the, the um, mosquitoes breed generally in water. Now, the adult mosquito, when the um, mosquito has gone through its normal life cycle from the egg to the larva to the pupa to the adult, the adult mosquito that is now formed is an active flying insect, it's an insect that can fly, and it lives it's for about two weeks. Its whole life cycle is about two weeks. It's found mostly in the tropics. Um, the female mosquito feeds on blood. It needs that blood for the eggs to mature. While the um, male mosquitoes feed on plant juices. Now, most mosquitoes are usually active between the sunset and the sunrise. That is the period most mosquitoes are active. So, that's usually during the night period when the darkness has set. So, mosquitoes are usually active in the dark. Now that we've talked about the life cycle of the mosquitoes, we now have to talk about the control of mosquitoes. What are the different methods we can employ? What are the different ways we can control mosquitoes and prevent their spread? So we have the environmental methods, 
We have the chemical methods, we have the biological methods, and we have the genetic methods. So we'll be talking about each of these different methods and the ways we can employ these methods to control mosquitoes. Now, talking about the environmental methods of um, controlling mosquitoes, these methods are usually aimed at the breeding and the resting places of the mosquitoes. So these methods are actually aimed at disrupting the breeding and the um, resting of the mosquitoes. So in these methods, we either destroy the places where they rest and breed, and we make it or we'll make it unsuitable for um, these purposes for them breeding or resting. So we have several methods we can do this. We have several methods in which we can disrupt or destroy these places, or we can make these places unsuitable for their breeding and their resting. So one of these methods is by draining swamps, ditches, pools, clogged drains, and um, so similar places like that frequently. We drain these places frequently so that mosquitoes cannot find suitable places to lay their eggs. These places we mentioned, the swamps, the ditches, the pools, the clogged drains, and um, some other places like that are places where mosquitoes can lay their eggs. So we, when we destroy and drain these places, mosquitoes cannot find suitable places to lay their eggs. Another method by which we can control mosquitoes is by disposing unwanted containers, such as tin cans, coconut shells, and um, other materials like that, that can collect and provide suitable places for mosquitoes to breed. So we, dis we dispose materials that can collect mosquitoes or that can attract mosquitoes for breeding. So t materials like tin cans, like coconut shells, we dispose of such materials so that mosquitoes cannot use those places to breed. So we can do this by either burying or burning these containers in places where there are no garbage disposal services. But if there are garbage disposal services, um, we just dispose them properly with, our um, with the garbage disposal services. They would pack these containers or these materials and put them in places where they cannot be suitable for mosquitoes to do their breeding. So another way we can um, employ environmental methods to prevent the breeding of mosquitoes is by adding salt to ant traps. So that um, makes the water unsuitable for egg development. So when we add salt to ant traps, that makes the water very unsuitable, unfit for egg development. So that's another way to control mosquitoes with the environmental method. So another way we can um, prevent the breeding of mosquitoes is by spraying stagnant water bodies with oils such as kerosene. You can use kerosene and some other types of oil. So what, what this oil does is that it forms a film or a surface film over the um, water that prevents lava from breathing. It prevents it from breathing in air. And um, the oil can also enter into the breathing tubes and the spiracles of the lava and block them. So when it does that, it, can, it, it prevents air from passing through and can kill the lava and also the pupa. So you can spray stagnant water bodies um, with um, oil. And we can use, an example of oil we can use is kerosene. So that would prevent the uh, lava and the pupa from breathing properly and that can kill them. So that way we've controlled the breathing of the mosquitoes. So another method we can employ is clearing shrubs and dense vegetation around residential areas so that the adult mosquitoes have no resting or hiding places. So bushes and um, dense vegetation are uh, places that can attract mosquitoes easily. So when we clear those shrubs and those um, bushes, those dense vegetation around residential areas, mosquitoes will not have places to hide or rest. So that's another way of controlling mosquitoes. Those are the environmental methods of controlling mosquitoes. We also have the chemical methods. Now, chemical methods, as the name implies, involves the use of chemicals. And the chemicals we are talking about are insecticides that can kill various stages of the mosquitoes. You know, we've talked about the metamorphosis of the mosquito. So we use insecticides that can kill 
the mosquito at the different stages of its metamorphosis or its life cycle. So we can spray this insecticide onto the interior surfaces of the house. Then we can also uh, mix this insecticide with oil that we use to spray stagnant water bodies. We can use so that is just a chemical method of controlling mosquitoes. We use chemicals, and the chemicals we are talking about are insecticides. So this insecti insecticides can kill these mosquitoes. We see um, the use of this in everyday life when people spray their houses with um, insecticides like bagon and the rest. So those insecticides just kill um, insect vectors like mosquitoes. So we use this insecticide to control insect vectors and that's a chemical method of controlling mosquitoes. And then we also have the biological methods of um, controlling mosquitoes. Now, when we're talking about biology, we're talking about life. So the biological methods involves using living things and living things we're talking about are namely animals, which are predators of this um, mosquito. So we use predators of mosquitoes and uh, pathogens of mosquitoes to reduce the mosquito population. We can use um, mosquito eating fish like uh, the guppies. We introduce them into ponds, ditches and uh, swamps to feed on the larva and the pupa. That way we are controlling the mosquito population. So we can use, a, when we say biological method, we're just talking about using living things. And um, the living things are most, that can control other um, living things like them. So for the mosquitoes, we use animals. And an example is the, um, is, is the guppy. Guppies. Guppies are mosquito eating fish. So we put them in um, ponds and um, in ditches. So they feed on the pupa and the larva of um, mosquitoes. And uh, they prevent them from becoming full blown mosquitoes. And that way we are controlling the population of the mosquitoes. Then, apart from the, um, the biological method, we also have the genetic methods of controlling mosquitoes. Now, this genetic control includes the use of um, the release of sterile male mosquitoes into the environment. So we use, we release sterile male mosquitoes into the environment. So when this um, sterile male mosquito males mates with a normal female mosquito, when a sterile male mosquito mates with a normal female mosquito, what happens is that the female mosquito doesn't lay any eggs because the male mosquito is sterile. So if we release enough male, um, sterile male mosquitoes into the environment, eventually the mosquito population will die out because they'll be unable to reproduce because they, if the sterile male are mating with the normal females, they'll be unable to produce eggs. And if they're unable to produce eggs, the population of the mosquitoes is controlled. They'll be, the population will keep reducing until the mosquitoes eventually die out. So when I mentioned sterile male mosquitoes, I know you must have been wondering, how do we get these sterile male mosquitoes? Or how do we make them sterile? What we do is we capture normal male mosquitoes in the laboratory and we expose them to some certain chemicals and some radiation to make them sterile. And after we've done this, we release them into the open, into the environment, so that they can mate with normal female mosquitoes. So apart from the environmental, the chemical, the biological, and the genetic methods, and all those methods of um, controlling mosquitoes. We still have some other methods of controlling mosquitoes. Um, one of them include um, sleeping under mosquito nets. So if we sleep under mosquito nets, that prevents um, mosquitoes from biting us and uh, that prevents the spread of diseases. So we are controlling mosquitoes that way. And also we can always um, apply physical attack to killing mosquitoes. We can swat them, we can kill them with our hands or slippers or any other object. So that's just physically killing the mosquitoes. And that way we're also controlling mosquitoes and preventing them from spreading diseases. So with that, we've come to the end of today's lesson and today's video. So in our next video, we'll be talking about the control of another insect vector, which is the house fly. So we'll be talking about how we can control house fly and the life cycle. See you in our next video. Bye.